Hello there Aquarius, welcome to your reading. Now when I was shuffling the cards for you, um, what I saw was um, there's this well and you know it, it's like one of those old school types of well with the the water like a pail that's uh, attached to the top of the well so that people can lower the pail into the water and, and draw water. And uh, I hear a voice coming from the bottom of the well and it's like, help me, I'm stuck. And then I see a woman walking over it. So I don't know if you're the one stuck in the water or the woman. And then she was like, who's down there? And the person in the uh, well says, just help me get out of here. And so you lower the bucket and the other person, I, um, you know, it, it's, it's not seen, but I'm assuming the other person climbs into the bucket and then you it, it takes a lot of work right because um there is uh water there is just the weight of it and then you kind of turn the lever to pull up the 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 strings or to, the cords and then you know the the person finally emerges from the well and she is shaking she's frozen she's all wet and she she comes out of the pail of water and then she lands onto you know solid ground and then you look at her and she looks exactly like you it was kind of creepy so she looks exactly like you and that's the image just stops it was just like a dead stop and so when I saw that um, I saw two messages the first one is that I don't know in what capacity you guys are working, but I feel almost like for many of you, you're in a position where you are dealing with a lot of crises. You're dealing with either people who are in distress, you're dealing with um, like a very uh, kinetic type of a work environment where you're helping people. You might be, you know, a light worker, honestly. Um, mainly because I feel like you're dealing with a lot of people's problems. You're getting people out of some really deep, dark situations. And, um, I, I feel like you, it, it's, it's physically very, very taxing on your body. Okay. And I feel in a way too, you know, you guys are not, uh, emotional people in general, but I also feel it is taxing for you emotionally and also spiritually. And so this emergence coming out of this dark well into the light indicates to me a need to kind of purge yourself of whatever it is that you're dealing with. So leave your work at work. When you come home, you should be able to come home to a clean slate, okay? Don't bring that baggage with you home. So that's what I'm feeling. Some of you, for example, could be social workers. Some of you could be therapists. Some of you could be healers. Some of you could be doctors or nurses. And you see a lot of trauma. And um, I feel like, you know, it's it's not the, the, the flesh wounds that really gets to you. It's more the emotional trauma that you see people go through. And especially people who are very, very stuck in their predicament. It, it makes you feel very sad. And um, I feel like, you know, it stays with you like that, that type of other people's trauma, it leaves an imprint and it stays with you because they're screaming out for help and they're, they're they need help. They need guidance. They need somebody to come and save them. And, um, you know, it, it really speaks to your core. And so you find yourself inadvertently coming to their rescue and, uh, you kind of need to start drawing boundaries I'm sensing or you can help but you know don't let it affect you and you also need to understand as well that um, people have to you know it, it's almost like if we keep helping others it enables that pattern of behavior and that pattern of dependency and so help those that are willing to help themselves help those that are willing to make changes in their lives okay um so that's the first message the second message that i got out of this is that you've been stuck in a very cold watery and water is just not your element 
you've been out of your element for a very long time. And I feel like it's time the universe tells you to come into the light. And uh, a lot of the times, for example, I feel like some of you might have dealt with some breakup, some major disappointment. And um, you might feel like, you know, and you know, not to be sexist or anything, but I, I, the image that I got was, it feels like, you know, I'm looking for a savior. I'm looking for my knight in shining armor. So if you are, have recently broken up or if you've dealt with like a emotionally just um, disappointing type of a situation, you're hoping somebody would come in. Uh, you're hoping to, you know, fall in love again, or, you know, you're hoping for some type of an external uh, change or an external person to come in and kind of rescue you from this watery grave. But the message that I got and the fact that the person in the water or in the well looks exactly like the person on land, it, it just feels to me like you're your own savior. You are going to have to get yourself out of this situation. And don't look to other people to save us from our predicament. We have to be the one to realize, you know what, enough's enough. I'm not going to stay in this. I'm not going to dwell on this. I'm not going to sulk. I'm going to empower myself by getting myself out of this situation. Okay? So those are the two messages um, that came through with that image. And with this spread, what really struck me was uh, you definitely have you definitely have two options when it comes to lovers here. So I have you in the middle, Queen of Swords. This is your energy. This is somebody who's very intelligent. Um, I feel like very established in 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 your career as well. You're at a point where you know you know what you're doing. Um, you are able to take care of yourself. You're self-sufficient. You don't really need another person. And on either side of you are these two kings. The first one is the King of Cups. So this is a Pisces, a Cancer, or a Scorpio. The second one here is the King of Swords. And this is a, a very strange depiction of the King of Swords. I, I don't think of the King of Swords with this energy. He almost feels like the King of Wands. He's um, very alpha, you know, takes up a lot of space. Um, possibly dresses very well, okay? Um, so Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. So you're in the middle, wedged between these two people. And it's almost like, who do I pick? Who is right for me? Do I want either of them or do I want none of them? So I feel like you're in a position that is very empowering. You get to choose. You get to decide. And so this is a really good space to be, you know, when we are the one actively and proactively making decisions that affect our lives rather than just going along with the ride. So I feel like you're in a really, really good position. And um, when I saw these cards, what I felt was the King of Cups, the water sign, it seems like they really want to build with you, okay? This is somebody who's very emotionally intelligent, okay? And when I say that, it, it's almost like a lot of the times I mention, you know, people have a really hard time reading Aquarius, understanding Aquarius people, understanding what you like, what you don't like, understanding your emotional needs. This water sign understands your emotional needs. They know what you need. And even like they, they can read you like almost like an open book. Um, no one can understand us 100%, but this is somebody who makes themselves emotionally available to you. And they really care very, very deeply about you. And this is somebody who is really strong. It's it's almost like they've been through a lot in their lives. And they've been through a lot of emotionally trying situation. Hence, they have matured and they've become the king where they are very, very, very much in touch and in control of their emotions. So it's somebody that has emotional strength, emotional intelligence. And I feel like they just... They know what they want, okay? 
And this is a person that wants to build with you. They either want to have a family with you. They want to, you know, build a future with you. They want to um, build a life with you. For whatever reason, you have released this person. You have, you know, released the situation mainly because I feel like there might be communication issues between the two of you. Um, I also feel like the relationship feels a little bit distant. So even though it's a water sign, I feel almost like because it's not your element, you feel a little bit out of your comfort zone with this. It feels like uncomfortable. It feels like, you know, um, that person down in the well, okay? It's like, it's so emotional. It's cold and it's... um it's wet, it's uncomfortable, um, it's just a dark place to be, and I don't know why that is, because, you know, the, the way this person shows up, they're very much in control of the, their emotions, but you feel like being with them feels a little bit like living in a well, it's uncomfortable, it's just uncomfortable, and then there's this other person, who you feel is like your perfect match. Whenever the king and the, the queen of the same court card or the same suit comes out, I usually think of it as the ideal match or the perfect match, okay? However, the person falls out in the reverse position. So this is somebody that could be a little bit careless when they talk. They could be a little bit hurtful. They could, you know, jab at you or they could... Um, aggravate a situation it's almost like defensiveness looking for a fight um somebody having trust issues and somebody that is not 100 percent um i would say honest and i i feel this element here about them being emotionally just um emotionally unavailable and they seem to me to be a little bit kind of um immature and what I'm getting here is, you know, the, the, the communication on good days is great. On bad days, it's horrible. Whereas with this water sign, it's very consistent. It's very, like, um, it's very stable. Whereas with this person, it's very unpredictable. But as an Aquarius, you thrive on the unpredictability of things. You like things to be a little bit exciting you like things to be a little bit um topsy-turvy and i'm sensing that you are also realizing that about yourself you're realizing that you're not seeking the same things that your your heart and your mind are not in the right place or you're you're not seeking things or putting energy into things and people that are good for you and so I have these two options and I feel almost like you really, really like they care about you. You're wedged in between these two people. They really care about you. Um, I, and I, I honestly feel like both parties want to build with you, but it's just a matter of, you know, what are you going to choose? And what I feel, though, is there is this really strong pull towards the air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. And the way that I look at this is the Five of Cups in the reverse, no longer, you know, pining after the past, ready to move ahead, ready to move on. And I also feel as well, though, there there's just a little bit of difficulties, mainly because you want to make this decision and you know if the decision rests upon you you want to make sure that you make the decision and you do it right so there's a lot riding on this decision okay so that's what i'm, I'm getting here and um i i honestly want to urge you to really think about do i even need to choose either one of them because you know the queen of swords she's self-sufficient she doesn't really need other people so do you really need to choose either one? Or can you just move ahead and not choose anybody and just find a third person? I feel 
honestly. Um, I don't see infidelity, I don't see cheating, I don't see things that are worrisome to me. I just feel like you're in control of this situation and you can do as you wish. And I'm drawn to this, she's holding a butterfly. She has a sword in one hand, but she's holding a butterfly in a very delicate, gentle way in the other. You are capable of very, very immense tenderness but you're also very, very capable of immense, like, um, you know, hurting people with your swords, okay? So which side are you going to choose as well? Do you want that delicate side, that gentle side? Or do you want to be a little bit more on the ice, you know, the ice queen, the, the more cutthroat, the more abrasive energy? So you have the potential between uh, within you, and you also want to moderate the way in which you feel emotions and the way in which you do things as well. This butterfly, it, it feels to me as if, you know, if it's meant for you, it will return back to you. You don't have to hold it so tightly in the palm of your hand. And I'm also led to believe as well, this might not be a decision that you, you have to make right now. There's nothing in here that dictates that time is running out, the clock is ticking. You don't need to make this decision. So let it, let it sit. If it's meant to be, it will still come back around, okay? Butterflies are fickle as well. So you might be dealing with someone who's a little bit fickle when it comes to their emotions, when it comes to the way they talk, when it comes to how they feel about you. It changes one day to uh, one from one day to the next, and that might be the air sign, the Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Whereas the other person, it's very, very constant, and it has been very consistent. So I feel like, you know, there's no timeline, there's no deadline, there's no due date, there's no expiration date. And so sit and mull over this decision, okay? Um, I have here the Ace of Pentacles. So this is definitely starting a new job, starting a new journey, increasing your income capabilities. And when I see the Ace of Pentacles, this is a job offer. And I usually think of it as working for another person, like uh, working a nine of five, something very stable, something very uh, routinized and something that is very um, like consistent. So you're definitely getting a, a job offer in the picture you might have to change your house you might have to you know um there's something here about being in a work environment that is very emotionally fulfilling but once again if you are finding yourself in that helping profession learn to detach and especially learn to leave work at work and don't carry that emotional baggage home with you okay Learn to kind of sever your, uh, separate your work life from your personal life because I, I feel like there's a blurring of the two here. I feel like many of you are going to be, uh, if you have already been given this job, um, I feel like it's wonder, wondrous, like it's magical. It's almost like, how did I get so lucky? And I'm also feeling as well this sense of in the past you were not fully being utilized to your full potential you did work that was not mentally challenging mentally stimulating and you need to be intellectually stimulated in order for you to feel happy with the ace of swords it's almost like the work was mundane the work was just um the work was just um it didn't, in, it, it didn't feel inspiring. It didn't feel like you were in the right place. It didn't feel like you were in your element. And so moving forward, there is a job here that is going to be very emotionally rewarding, emotionally fulfilling. And I feel like there is a lot of intellectual stimulation coming through as a result of the job. Okay. And hence, be careful about being a workaholic and, you know, learn to leave work at work and learn to separate your work life from your personal life. Okay. Don't bring um, work home with you and, you know, try to enjoy the, the, the time that you have free and especially try to cultivate a social life. 
Um, the cards do look a little bit solitary, so I definitely feel like you need to cultivate more of a community, a sense of community, or incorporate more people into your life and, and make time for, you know, Im, uh, important non-romantic relationships and things like that, okay? I'm also feeling as well, the past relationship, it might not have, whoever the person is, they might not have appreciated your intelligence, so I don't know why that is. They they might have done things to undermine you. The communication might not have been uh, smooth between the two of you. <clears throat> but there's this element here about one person being very emotionally just um, your cup of tea, but intellectually they're not your cup of tea. They're 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 not in alignment with you. They might not have the same interests, they might not have the same hobbies. You guys might not have the same conversations when you try to align your conversations. One person likes one thing, the other person likes another and there's disagreement. So it's it's almost like you feel very underappreciated when it comes to your intellectual capabilities in that relationship whereas the other person really appreciates you they ask you for your opinions they ask you for your for your advice they ask you for your expertise because they trust your intelligence and it can feel really flattering nothing is more flattering for an aquarius than someone telling the aquarius you're really smart or you're really intelligent or i like the way you think or you are a very very ingenious thinker like that's flattering for an aquarius you know never mind you're beautiful you're attractive you are cute i feel like those things if if the aquarius person knows they're attractive, knows they're cute, they already know these things. But like, in order to get into the heart of the Aquarius person, you can say, you know, you're really, really intelligent. I like the way you think. I like the way you problem solve. I like how creative you are with your thoughts. And I like how concise you communicate, or I like how well you communicate, or I like how articulate you are. So I feel like the other person really appreciates these qualities about you and you know i feel like for you guys physical connection like a physical attraction it's it's all nice and 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 and, and uh fun but i don't feel like it's top priority for you guys you want that intellectual connection you want that uh, uh you want that you know common thoughts common sense common goals common ideas common ideology somebody with your same values and and so i feel that's why you're very torn between these two people and energetically it's almost like you're getting your different needs met from the different people and that's why it's really hard to just say you know one person is perfect because they have one thing but they might be lacking in other departments and so you're out looking for perfection and there's nothing wrong with that set your standards high there's nothing wrong with that and you know perfection exists somewhere and you're out to find it so I would say do you really need to choose between these two options or is there a third option that is not yet revealed, that is out there, that is perfect for you? Because you're not going to settle, right? You're not going to settle for less than you feel you deserve. And if your happiness and the rest of your life and your, you know, your, your emotional satisfaction rise on this decision, you want to choose the best, okay? So I definitely feel like it's the month to honestly come into your own sense of self-worth, coming into your rescue and realizing that if I'm not happy, I'm going to move myself away from it. And many of you have done that and you are feeling very empowered where you are right now. Career is going well. You're letting go of past emotional issues. You're letting go of past people. You're letting go of past emotional baggage. And so you're really strong emotionally, mentally, and just physically. You're able to hoist yourself, your full body, the full weight of it, out of that well. 
And so you don't need a knight in shining armor. You don't need another person to come into your life and to assist you with things and to, you know, advise you on what you need to do and who you should choose and what you need to, uh, what decision you need to make. So come into your own sense of power and really stay true to yourself. It's not about, you know, um, I want this person or that person. It's not so much about that. It's just more about, I know myself really well at this point and I know what's good for me and I know what's not. And I don't need to make a decision. I don't need to do anything based on what people are telling me. I don't need to sit there and listen to what people think they know about me or how people assess me. I'm done listening because I feel for many of you, you're sick and tired of it. And once again, you might be in a profession where you are listening to a lot of people's problems and you have to sort out and make sense of their problems and, and you know, find solutions to their problems. And it can be very taxing. It can feel like, it, it just can feel, it, it can feel very tiring, very draining. And so I'm sensing maybe some of you are, you know, sequestering yourself, like trying to block other people out energetically because you need to, to you know, take care of yourself. And I feel like you have already come into that sense of self-awareness that you need to take care of yourself, that I come first. Everybody else can wait and I'm not going to do anything I'm not ready for. I'm not going to be coerced into uh, making any decisions that aren't good for me. And I'm not going to take other people's emotional, um, you know, like the, it's, it's almost like people taking an emotional dump on you and expect you to clean up the mess. You're not going to do that. You're going to put yourself first and you're going to put other people second. And there's nothing wrong with that. So what I have here is I do have the tower and I do have your energy. This is the, this is the Knight of Swords looking at this tower, looking at a situation where things cannot be rebuilt, looking at some type of a fantasy, um, type of a relationship, an attraction or a relationship where it was built on a very faulty foundation it could potentially be like fatal attraction or it could be like temptation or it could be a situation where we try and try and try but the other person is just completely wrong for us we try they try both parties try but at the end of the day it's like we've got to move on it's like beating a dead horse or being in a situation where it's like, it's not going to go anywhere. Okay. I pulled out three cards to clarify the tower and what I have here is the lovers. So it is about a choice. Two of swords coming into the realization. Honestly, I feel like I don't really need to choose amongst the options. I'm okay on my own. And we have the judgment card, new beginning. And I feel like this is a, a very karmic um, card. It indicates to me that you guys are doing the right thing or you are trying your very best to do the right thing by everybody. But at the same time, working from a very exalted place where you are considering actions and consequences. You are also yearning for a new start in your life. And this new start is coming but it requires a big paradigm shift it requires dismantling things in your life that are not working things in your life that you're not happy with let all of it fall to the ground so that you can rebuild and start over okay so definitely new beginnings coming into the picture here so aquarius um i feel like the energy for this as we round out this year it's going to feel a little bit like it's going to feel like things are sh shaking and then everything's going to fall to the ground. However, 
you have new things that are just like emerging so i i feel like almost like um you know how in the winter time the the ground is covered in snow once you sweep away the snow you have like uh, plants underneath that are trying to sprout out that are trying to grow out of it okay so through whatever whatever you're dealing with for this you know the the uh, latter part of december i feel like you're wiping the slate clean and I feel like you're in a position where you are trying to do the right thing. And you are in a position where it's it's almost like you're thinking with your head and you're definitely making decisions to cut ties, cut communication, cut people out of your life and move on with your life. Okay? Um, I hope the reading is helpful for you. And uh, once again, um, I will be back in January. I, I believe I should be settled in so I should have time to do like the weeklies once again. Okay, I enjoy the weeklies. They're shorter and it's easier to pick up the energy and I feel like, you know, it's not the end of the world if a weekly is bad, whereas if a monthly is bad, it's kind of depressing, right? Like you, you guys want to have something positive to look forward to. But either way, I'm not going to uh, dwell on this. I wish you all the best and take care of yourself. I'll be back in January and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.